Hey everybody, happy Tuesday and welcome to Let's Get Live with Dracaena Wines. And you know, there's nothing to talk about today other than harvest because we are getting so, so close. Now, many places are already in harvest. With this heat wave, harvest has been fast, early, and furious. But on our vineyard site for our Cab Franc, we're, we're ahead of schedule, but we haven't harvested yet. But we are getting very, very close. So what you hear a lot about in harvest decisions when it's time to harvest is the sugar level. And that was a big deal with this heat spike that we've had, right? Because when the heat increases, the sugars in the grapes are going to increase because what happens just like when you're in the sun you start to dehydrate same thing with the grapes when the temperature is over 100 degrees first of all the grape vines don't like it they kind of start to shut down so advancing in maturation isn't going to happen but as the grapes start to shrink a little bit the sugar levels inside seem to get bigger but it's kind of like a false reading because as soon as the temperatures drop, then those sugar levels are gonna come back to normal. So during the heat spike, it was like 27 bricks sugar level. Okay, now that the temperatures have dropped, thankfully, we're back down to 25, 26. So if we had picked during the heat spike, we wouldn't have gotten the results that we wanted because back then the flavors weren't there. So although most people always talk about the sugar decisions, there's a lot more going on in a harvest decision. So first of all, the first thing I wanna show is that there are differences depending on where the fruit is. So in a warm climate, as the grapes mature, they start to lose acidity, but they gain bricks. So more sugar, but they lose acidity and acidity is really important, okay? And that's kind of reverse in a cool climate. In a cool climate, it can maintain that acidity, but it's really tough to get those sugars up there. So it's kind of like a balancing act, depending on where your grapes are, as to when you want to pick. You wanna pick, obviously, at the perfect acidity and the perfect sugar levels, but it's kind of a rare and a tough time to get both of those going at the same time. So you're gonna to have to do the best that you can, and lots of times you're gonna to have to make decisions. So for example, it's it just started raining, right? Which is wonderful, we need the rain, but not the best time of year for rain. So a lot of grape clusters, right? If they're those varieties that are tight grape clusters, people are gonna be picking them earlier than they really wanted to, because once it rains like this at this time of year, and the moisture gets inside those grape clusters, it's going to make it prone to mildew. And then we don't want mildew, right? We don't want mold, we don't want mildew. So that's a problem. But the grape varieties that are uh, lighter clusters, you know, open clusters, that's a little less of a concern. Now for this vintage, our clusters are very light. They're spread apart. And although that's, a, you know, that's because a lot of flowering didn't happen, we had a lot of uh, shatter, right, or jacks. But in this case, we weren't worried about picking because there's enough ventilation that we don't have to worry about the mold and the mildew. Oh, my wine channel, you had the same issues in Sierra Foothills. Yes, I see, yep. It's kind of the whole, the whole California wine region kind of had that, I know, okay? Um, so when we're looking to decide what to think, okay, as I said, right, as we, oh, thank you. As we go through harvest, this, or as we go through maturity, ripening, sugar levels are going to increase, acid levels are gonna decrease, and we wanna walk that balance, that balance line of what we are go when we're going to pick. So once we harvest, right, the other thing about the sugar level is that the sugar equals alcohol. And that's what we want, is the alcohol. Now here's a little cool thing, okay? Years ago, when you wanted to figure out what the alcohol, potential alcohol used to be, okay, it used to be divided by 0 0.50, right? If it's 28 bricks, it's going to be 14% alcohol, okay? But these little yeasties have gotten so good at their job that they've actually become more efficient, okay? So they actually can eat up more of that sugar. So that, that, 
correlation of 50% is no longer true. And now we're dividing by 0.57. And, you know, who knows in the future what it's going to be as they get more efficient at their jobs. So, yes, we are concerned about sugar levels. We're concerned about acid levels. Okay. And then here's the technical stuff, right? What we really are shooting for at harvest, we are looking for a pH between 3.4 or 3.5. That's where we want it to be. Okay. It's really tough for microorganisms, bad microorganisms, to live in that pH zone, okay? So wine is kind of naturally safeguarded by that. In the bricks, depending on what varietal you are picking, you are looking between 22 and 27. Now for us, for our Cab Franc, we look between 27 and 28. And again, that has to do with the flavor profile for our vineyard site and also the um, pyrazines, okay? Because remember from a previous uh, Dracaena with Live, the pyrazines disappear in the sun. So we are walking that balance line of making sure that the fruit is in the sun enough to break, uh, break down those pyrazines so you don't get those bell peppers in your face, but also not to be so uh, bright that we are raisin grapes, okay? And then the total acidity within the wine, we're looking to be 0.6 and 0.7. So we walk through the vineyard, we're checking the sugar levels in the vineyard, we're walking through, we're, do, we're pulling grapes, we're pulling samples, and thank you, we're pulling samples, and we are running some analysis to see where it is. But where does it all come down to? Our taste. As we go through, we're tasting the clusters, and we want the skin to kind of peel away from that pulp nice and easily, but not, you know, I mean, it's not like, right? There's that texture we want. And then it's all about the flavor profile. So it really does come down. You can do all of the analytics that you want, but it really does come down to um, the palate, okay? And then the last thing is, is uh, with that pH, we have to keep in mind that it, it changes um, as it goes through fermentation. So you have to kind of predict where it's going to go. Okay, so we wanna pick with a little bit higher acid because that pH is going to drop a little during fermentation, or I should say raise a little during that fermentation. So we wanna make sure that we have a little um, extra acid before we pick in order to compensate it. So our decisions, there is analytics, comes down to profile and it's a bit of prediction and of course a lot of what mother nature is going to say she made a lot of people rush to go harvest this week because of her impending rain which was quite a bit okay so that is some of our harvest decisions and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and you know, follow us to keep along. We will be doing more about uh, harvest coming up. If you go back to our profile, you'll see that there is a video of how we actually check the sugar in the vineyard with a refractometer. And uh, it's a pretty popular video. So it's kind of cool and hope to see you on the next Let's Get Live. Anything you want me to talk about, leave a comment and have a great week. Slancha.